Yeah, if you have sex with food, it's just a perversion to eat people. It's probably a felony. Yeah, you yeah. go to jail for that. Yeah. Comfortable? Yeah. Comfortable? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. And today we'll be making sense of life through Silver Linings Playbook. Playbook. Yeah. yeah. Starring... Bradley Cooper. And Jennifer Lawrence. And Jennifer Lawrence. Disclaimer. Disclaimer, oh. yes. Uh, we, we did a quick <laughs> uh, refresher on bipolar disorder. Not um, even refresher. Yeah. Because we don't really know no, a lot no. about it. Just pick up. As we're talking about it, we're, we're going to try and make as few mistakes about the disorder as possible. As possible, yeah. yeah. We are not, uh, we're not authority. clinically yeah. approved. I, I liked it overall, right? Uh, the story follows Pat, who uh, was imprisoned after he, came, he, he, he attacked the uh, his wife's lover. Yeah, or she, wife she, lover. She, it was the wife's like the lover. professor or something at her where she was working at the school, I think. Yeah, and they were engaging in, in the carnal knowledge in the shower, in the shower. which is and, hard to do, and uh, which is hard to do. Honestly, the movies lie. Yeah, beats. The dude up. The, the living tar and the molasses out of the guy. Out of the guy and yeah. ends up uh, getting, arrested. Going to, getting arrested. Yeah. And then the wife has gets a restraining order against yeah. him. He spends time in uh, probably a mental institute. Yeah. A no. mental institution. And then he's there for a while, loses weight, which is An asylum of sorts? Yeah. I, I, I'm actually not sure We're what not the sure. contemporary word for that is. Is anymore, yeah. He works on himself while he's in there with the view to get Nikki back. That's the wife, the name of the wife who cheated on him. Yeah. And he, one of those ways that he's doing that, besides getting better, is mentally is to lose weight because apparently that used to be a sore point for both of them. Right. And he starts, so he lives back with his parents and tries to spend that time to work on himself enough and all the points that he felt were the issue with the relationship so he could win his wife back. Yeah, starts reading books that he thinks if he read these books, yeah. she would be happy. One of the points of the movies, he's still kind of missing the point is that sure you can lose weight, but it's like, you know, there's, there's more to it than that. He also meets this girl, Tiffany, who is friends with. Nikki, his ex-wife, or his wife still, um, his estranged wife, and uh, they start to form a uh, unconventional... Well, her sister is friends with Nikki. She's not friends oh, with Oh, yeah, friends of but... friends. Yeah. Yeah, there's a friends yeah. of friends thing. So initially the sister, yeah. Tiffany's sister, then tries to hook uh, Tiffany up with, oh, that's right. with Pat, right. um, and then but Pat's not interested because he's still hung up on Nikki. Yeah. They end up forming a kind of friendship that isn't really a friendship. But yeah. Pat says, I want you to deliver a letter to Nikki, please. Yeah. And she's like, okay, well, what do I get out of it? Because yeah. I always give people things and I yeah. never get anything in return. So I have this dance competition that I want to yeah. participate in. I would like for you to be my partner then. Yeah. Yeah. Tit for tat. Yeah. And so that's basically the relationship yeah. throughout the movie. They're through their getting ready. They start an acquaintanceship, acquaintanceship, get to know each other through the dance competition, and they end up, spoiler alert, End up getting together at the end. Yeah. Actually. And I think it's better that way. Yeah, me too. I like that part where she talks about that uh, one point where she's saying, wait, I keep, you know, like, I, I'm, you know what? I'm actually sick of this thing that I keep doing where I keep giving so much to people. And like, I'm depressed right now. I'm going through a lot of shit. My husband yeah. died and I'm still broken up about it, understandably. And uh, you know what? I'd actually maybe like to get some reciprocal help here. Yeah. From Brad Pitt, Bradley, Brad Pitt, Brad. Bradley Cooper's character. Pat, from Pat. 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 He's like, but you already agreed yeah. to, to me not having to do something for you. Now you're changing the terms. Yeah. Eventually you're but it's like, yeah, I can see where she's like, and it's that kind of thing that they talk about, you know, where it's, where, which has been said where just because you've agreed on something before doesn't mean you can, you can't alter it later if you feel like it's. It's not working for you. Exactly. You know? I like that too because... In relationships. Obviously, you don't want to do that with like legal agreements and things. And you don't want to alter the deal further for certain things. I mean, obviously, even like, in legal agreements, yeah. you can alter it. But yeah. you'd have to like, get the consensus of both parties. But in relationships, right? We're talking yeah. about relationships yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. That's something that I've also personally struggled with. I think it is such an important lesson to learn mm -hmm. that you could have agreed to relate with a person... Mm -hmm in a certain way for 50 years. Mm -hmm. And then the whole time you were unhappy about something mm -hmm. and 
you can say on the 51st year that, you know what, we have been relating in this way for 50 years. I don't like it. It has not served me. Yeah. Can we have some reciprocity in the relationship? I would like you to consider adjusting ABC mm -hmm. to accommodate so that we're both accommodated in this relationship. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times it's true. People will be like, and you, and this is why then you're going to question yourself or hesitate to yeah. ask for this adjustment because you're thinking, well, I have been doing this for 50 years. Is yeah. it fair for me all of a sudden if I've been doing it for 50 years to yeah. want it a change? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is fair yeah. because we're people. And a lot of the times we tend to like to please other people mm -hmm. versus ourselves. If yeah. you are, you know, yeah. the kind of per like a, a person who's, who's inclined in that way. Yeah. The problem is it's easy to get used to the situation. For both people. I guess the test for whether or not the le the relationship is lucrative anyway is right. whether or not the person will be amenable right. to adjusting to your personal yeah. needs. And if they don't, it means you cut those ties yeah. and you don't stick around. It yeah. is it's okay. It is a good thing. Never mind okay. Mm -hmm. It is important to have reciprocity in a yeah. relationship yeah. always. Yeah. You know, like at the end of the day, I think when you go through some kind of... You, you go through trauma, you, you can... A lot of people will do self-destructive things, which I think you do those because it's easier than thinking about, okay, this person died and trying to deal with it, you know, and to try to heal, or to, to think about your pain. You'd rather distract yourself from the pain. You'd rather not, not go to see a shrink and talk to them about issues because that means you'd have to think about the guilt that you feel and you don't want to be at home like thinking about all of these things. So what you do, you distract yourself. People distract themselves in different ways. Either you're going to go drinking like crazy or you're going to eat a heck of a lot of food or you're going to go and have sex. These are all the same things. These are all coping mechanisms. So at the end of the day, I think one, one thing that she does learn when she's talking about taking and giving, I mean, giving too much and not getting anything as an, in return is that when you are having these people over these men, you know, or you're engaging with them sexually, you do realize that they're just there for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. You want companionship. I think that's what it is when she's enticing these people to have sex with her. I think she wants that kind of affection or companionship. But like, you know, uh, drinking or dealing with food, it's not the same thing as connection or yeah. companionship or feeling full or, yeah. you know, feeling good from the alcohol. It, it's it it simulates it for a bit yeah and, like, oh, yeah, and then you just kind of realize yeah like either if you're having alcohol for example you wake up from your drunken stupor and yeah. you realize oh, okay well that didn't help my problems are still here yeah. after the sexual engagements with these random men they just leave they don't mm -hmm. care about who you are they got what they wanted and they leave and you realize that yeah i didn't get anything there mm -hmm. so i think that that's where she was coming from yeah the father no, the father. Robert De Niro, Pat's father. So at the end, he does kind of redeem himself, but he was a problem the entire movie. Entirely. Yeah. Setting up this whole gambling agreement with his friend where not only did his, that, that, you know, his football team had to win, but then his son had to get a certain score at the dance competition. Yeah. A lot of... Dysfunction. He'll just put this, these pressures on people. Yeah. All the time, just yeah. to, for the excitement of the, the gamble. This movie obviously is dealing with family dysfunction mm -hmm. and is dealing with mental illness. Just looking at how the dad is, it kind of reminded me of, there's this, I, I don't know if we've talked about Gabor Mate here. And he talks about how a lot of times with mental, people with mental challenges, it often stems from family dysfunction and that it's not necessarily a biological predisposition. Mm -hmm. And he talks about how in the medical field, you're, a lot of doctors are treating the symptom and not the cause, the cause being family dysfunction and yeah. therefore arrested development for the child. Because if you had a, a father like Pat has, mm -hmm who turns you yeah. into his good luck charm yeah. and makes you believe that if every single time you don't do what he asks you to do and yeah. the your the football caused team misfortune loses, on the whole family. you've caused misfortune of the whole on the whole family because yeah. he's trying he's betting all yeah. the time yeah. wanting to put money together for yeah. his business and it all he's rest, the dad yeah. is resting all of these things on yeah. his, on Pat, yeah. you know, his He'll, son... He spent who's... basically, like, the family's savings. Yeah. And then he's Betting. like, well, you gotta do it because I otherwise spent... we'll lose all Exactly. Money. Otherwise we'll lose yeah. all the money. Yeah. And taking zero responsibility for himself. And so this... And placing it all on Pat's shoulders, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so for me, when I saw this dysfunction and I see Pat being bipolar and 
just how his bipolar manifests itself, it manifests, there were a lot of similarities there with his own dad, not really being aware of reality, of his own kind of reality, yeah. not being aware, recognizing the things that he does to his son, the detrimental effect that his behavior has on his son, his wife, his entire family, because it's not just Pat. But yeah, I, I was watching this and I was thinking a lot about Gabor Mate and just how much uh, your own family can affect your mm -hmm. mental state because... Yeah. You know, that kind of pressure yep. and that kind of, he talks about, uh, Gabor Mate talks about like, you know, your try, your brain as a human being develops in a certain way. But mm -hmm. if you are growing up in a certain kind of family that doesn't give you the the tools, the nurturing, the safety, the security mm -hmm. of that a parent should afford you, which clearly Pat's dad is not giving him that security because here's Pat's dad making him feel like you're responsible for every single thing. And you need to win. You need to make sure that we win. Oh, you, you're the one who screwed up here. Right. There is no security there. You're mm -hmm. operating on a sense of, am I going to be a good kid today or am I going to be a bad kid today? Mm -hmm. The whole family, again, when, when they have that dysfunction and lack of communicating. And if you're talking, you know, you can never talk about the person directly. So at one point, they're all telling, like, are you comfortable with lying to Pat yeah. saying that his wife is going to be at the show? And, and this was they, between and the mom and the dad. The mom and the dad and, and Tiffany, the, the girl that's doing the dance thing with them. They're really trying to rationalize this is a justifiable lie. Yeah. Except, you know, and, and, and then, you know, one point also Tiffany feels bad about it, but they still feel like, no, this is better than just telling Pat. The truth, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting, too, because the mom is so opposed to this. And then the dad is like, yeah, but you did it in that situation. Yeah, remember, you lied about yeah, uh, uh, Tiffany. Uh, you, I think she she somehow, like, was was telling Tiffany where Pat would run or something so they could meet exactly, up. Exactly, so they could meet, yeah. Or something. So, but, yeah, it's also that kind of like, well, you also have lied. So that means yeah. that you have to agree to this thing. That to you my to lie, too. Yeah. yeah. Let's so, just keep lying together. And then no one can ever stop this cycle. Yeah. No. Did Pat really have a fighting chance in that kind of family, to be honest? No. no yeah. Sure. Can you really, you know how, like, you can't grow in the place that makes yeah, you sick? True. That entire family. I think this dance with Tiffany was the thing that kind of, he was spending less time at home mm -hmm. and he was spending more time with her yeah. practicing for the dance. Yeah. And I think Gave that, that was... Yeah, focus on a purpose. Yeah, and also just removing himself from the situation, yeah. right? Yeah. The dysfunction, the family dysfunction that aggravates his mental mm -hmm. illness. Yeah, which shows, you know, how, you know, again, as, as kind of, in my mind, kind of uh, poking a hole in the idea that, you know, people are just born a certain way and they're only capable of certain things, is a lot of times it seems like that because it's hard to get yourself out of whatever situation. If you're in a yeah. situation that keeps you stuck in a certain way, that is your world. That is your reality. So it's hard to see that there, if you just changed a couple things, got a little, you know, got a little farther away from that, that you could then, you know, grow in, in ways that just wouldn't really make any sense in the moment. Cause you just, you know, you just think, well, that's, that's just how, how you are. And that's because a really that's invisible worldview. kind of, yeah you know, prison or, or kind of cage to see, you know. They're not even to say that we're completely, you know, spot on. Who knows? Just, just given our opinions. This is, yeah, like it's it's an opinion just based on personal experience yeah. and based on a lot of reading and interest in mm -hmm. these kinds of matters. Observations. Um, try. Yeah. We try. And of we're course. Just we're just trying here. We're it's just hard. trying, you know, like maybe that's not the case. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Maybe mm -hmm. that's not a ca the case. And it also obviously depends on, the extent of your mental illness. Mm -hmm. This may not necessarily apply to all mm -hmm. mental illness, right? I've been I've been wrong more than I've been not. Yeah. So and for me, I mean, it, why I, I think uh, there's a lot of credence to that idea that we're affected a lot of environmental factors is, I think we've all been through where there's a very, you know, toxic negative person that you're around. And it can really bring down the party, you yeah. know. Yeah. So if you have to deal with that as like every coworker is like that, and you have to go there every day, all day for years, it's gonna affect you. Yeah. So just imagine when that, but when you're a kid, when you're even more yeah uh, vulnerable. malleable, vulnerable, yeah, impressionable, exactly, you know? even worse. Yeah. And so imagine how, if you're a kid, you're doing that for years. That's when that. That's when you develop these things. They're much more rooted you know mm -hmm. uh in you because mm -hmm. yeah that's what you grew up in people can look at a person with bipolar and say this is what happens when a person has bipolar mm -hmm. and it, it can be very true but at the same time all of these same things i've seen in myself mm -hmm. you know looking not looking at myself and my contribution to whatever pain i may be going through in the moment and blaming other people instead of right. just like okay how am i participating in this thing right. 
Um, I think that's something that people have, like a lot of people have experienced, bipolar or not. You know, not necessarily looking at history in the past and looking at, okay, this has happened in the past, t not taking stock of your past mm -hmm. relationships, of your past experiences, to and how it affects the present and how you can change it. Because this is what Pat is doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like he's not taking stock of the things that he's, he's done in the past and how they're affecting his reality and how he needs to therefore make changes himself yeah. to adjust mm -hmm. and to find happiness. He's yeah. not taking stock of he these just things. Looks he at, he things. looks at things, okay, if I lose weight, then my life will get back together again. That's yeah. an easy fix for him. Yeah. Not to say necessarily that losing weight is easy for him, but you know, that's something that he can kind of measure. He can, he can see, you know, that doesn't require looking back at all the things that he caused and all the stuff that he had no control over growing up that affected him, yeah. that led him to, that, that takes more, time more more work yeah you know and which that's, that's harder for for people in yeah, general it's yeah. harder for people to do the work mm -hmm. i have the feed foxes in my head i get that who doesn't <laughs> the relationship between tiffany and pat is just uh, mm -hmm. it starts it starts sad, but ends so good. Mm -hmm. This was definitely a feel-good movie, but not in a... I don't know, like, there's obviously an aversion to people who take themselves yeah. seriously to feel feel-good feel movies. It was a good feel-good movie. But it was a really good feel-good. This, this is what I feel feel-good movies yeah. should be. <laughs> yeah. um, this is what I feel good feel-good movies should be. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's so many things about it that I love. Number one... They, re they create a, an environment in which both of them can grow and get better mm -hmm. because their families are dysfunctional and they are not the foundation on which someone who is struggling with mental illness or trauma can really truly change and grow and get and heal. Mm -hmm. So they afford these things to each other. They provide themselves this platform. And I think that was, I really cherish that. And I wish a lot of people would find relationships with people or pursue relationships with people that afford them this kind of healthy foundation on which to get to grow yeah. and become be the best version of themselves as possible. Yeah. This is the, the, number one. Number two, I love things that they, the fights that they have. Mm. Tiffany shares something about, because at this point, Pat is so blind to his own reality and he thinks that he's right and everybody else is wrong, mm -hmm. which apparently is some, another symptom of um, bipolar uh, disorder. But he, he thinks this way and Tiffany shares about my um the fact that she slept with all of these men at the office and and some women apparently and he then he's like oh man you are worse than me we are not the same oh, you yeah. slept with all these women right. i mean these people i didn't do that i'm so much better than you are and he's like yeah but you were just as interested and enticed mm -hmm. and completely drawn in when yeah. i was telling you about yeah. this thing you know my engagements with these yeah. so same with this these um, he, he really woman. he really also wanted to feel superior to her like he wasn't as messed up yeah like, like he, he wasn't was feeling as ashamed up. of where he was at but was always for a while fighting the fact and then she's like well, get off your who, who are horse. you look yeah. at you you know yeah. yeah which is also very interesting right because i think sometimes people who do have um insecurities about themselves might end up pursuing relationships with people who they think, okay, well, you're lower down the totem pole mm -hmm. and you're going to make me feel better because in this hierarchy, I'm definitely better than you. And I think with Pat, it was that mm -hmm. where he's like, I'm pursuing this relationship, whatever it is, because you make me feel better about myself. Because as far as I'm concerned, you're worse off than I am. And it's nice to see that there's someone who's worse off than I am. Very bad relationship, very mm -hmm. bad, bad foundation. However, again, like I said, it started off rocky, but then it gets, it progresses and gets better because of the fights. Like one of the fights, she's she, so she shares about the fact that okay, I slept with all of these people, and he's like, oh ew, you're you did all of that crap, oh my god, and she's like, how could you be? I was vulnerable to you, so extremely vulnerable to you, and you judge me, you know. Mm -hmm. That was one of my favorite scenes because I think that I know for me personally that ha that has been a fear in my life, and it has been an experience with some friends that were not necessarily great where you are vulnerable and people, we are vulnerable to, with, um, we want to be vulnerable, but when we are, sometimes people use that against us. And then because of that experience later, you then are more reluctant to share and open up. And obviously that uh, puts a cap on the kind of open uh, and good relationships that you can have with people if you don't want to be vulnerable anymore. But I did like that a lot because she wanted to be that way. She wanted that kind of relationship with him, but he was judgmental of her and, I think it was just that reminder for me personally to always, when you are interacting with people, whenever 
anybody share something with themselves that might be completely outside the realm of anything you could personally conceptualize or ever want to do to leave your own personal instinct aside towards that specific specific thing and understand that you're very different to people and people do things for many reasons and you cannot you know just having just met a person and not knowing the history that comes with that person just then decide oh you're a horrible human being because you did this disgusting thing that i would never do mm -hmm. you know yeah. and then when you when she was willing to push back against that ill treatment then he respects that yeah you know? exactly and that's, that's 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 the thing again a lot of times i think we're afraid to do that to call bad behavior out or, or judginess and things but a lot of times people will actually think on that uh, or, or just, um, you know, think twice next time or reflect on it. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's important to be able to do that. But if you do then get someone who's defensive, because there are people who, if you do express your needs or if you express that, you know, you're hurting me when you do this. Mm -hmm. That's not being confrontational, but there are people no. who can see take that, that as confrontational. As confrontational who, yeah. yeah, who take you expressing your needs and your desires or wants. Um, and vulnerability. And, and vulnerability. As conflict, which is interesting, right? Yeah. And that, that, that's the kind of, uh, which I would say, again, also comes from a certain kind of trauma where vulnerability is seen as confrontation. Yeah. It gets you all... Yeah, because because obviously then there are people who may not necessarily want to, want you to remind them of these certain things that they experience, their own vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. And if you're openly sharing your vulnerabilities, it might remind them of that. And so they don't really, it, it's kind of like an, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, and uh, which is also the tricky thing. I think that's why human relationships are so tough because we all need the, that certain, that really good, that really juicy vulnerability. But exactly, if the other person is not willing to accept it or they're willing to exploit it, then that's what causes the deepest hurt because you use the thing that the person is that needs the most and opens up yeah. the most. And then, so it's a uh, yeah, but people will keep doing that. And if you're someone that is not conscious of the people that you attract and you keep attracting people that will exploit your vulnerability, yeah, you know, then you're just going to be like, well, I guess everyone just does that without yeah. realizing, you know, maybe again, it's the environment you're in. Wait, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, and this, this seems very real to me where Pat's dad is able to see, you know, what? I don't even know if your wife ever really cared about you. Because those kind of people that are dysfunctional or exploitative can notice that in others, but they don't necessarily notice, notice when they're doing it themselves or yeah. they don't really think about it. Because mm -hmm. Pat's dad was aware at the end. He's like, go with Tiffany. She's clearly in love with you. You're daft if you don't realize it. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think Nikki ever cared. And you don't seem to get that either. And But at the same time, you know, he comes to him one time and he starts crying, sitting by his bed, being like, I really just want to spend some time with you. But then at other times, again, he'll lie to him, manipulate him. So I think it's one of those, you know, it's kind of, I think it's one of those people There's where... There's inconsistency. It's inconsistent. And, and I think, like, I don't, I think that was actually done intentionally. I don't know if at the end it's supposed to see that the father grew much. I think he's just one of those people that when it serves him... He'll be open with his son or he'll be like, tell him, tell it to him straight. And then other times still be selfish and just use people as pawns for his, his risks and his gambles. And yeah. His, you know, the whole family revolves around the dad and his per his own needs. Mm -hmm. So in the moment when he t says to Pat, I want, I'm trying all of these things. I want yeah. us to get closer. Who is that for? It's not mm -hmm. necessarily for Pat. It's, yeah, for, it's for himself. Him. Yeah. You know, the whole time. Let's get closer so that you can be my good luck charm and watch the game while everyone, well, mom cooks us food and then I can just sit there and watch the game and win money. And bet. Yeah. And even if he does want, in that, in that moment when he's crying, even if he does want that general relationship with, with Pat, that closer relationship, it's still, again, for him. Mm -hmm. Always. It's yeah. always for him. That's when he wants it. Yeah. When Pat wants it, that doesn't matter. Yeah. If you're coming from that background... You're most likely going to, um, if you don't deal with that, you go and you find a partner mm -hmm. who does exactly the same thing, treats the same who way treats you the same way did, that yeah. your dad did, or, yeah. you know, because that's how we are as human beings, mm -hmm. right? Like, even if, because you think that's normal, your yeah. brain associates dysfunction, abuse, mm -hmm. unhealthy relationships, yeah. neglect, whatever yeah. you, you, whatever it is, yeah. your brain associates it with normalcy, yeah. Because right. that's what you were don't, socialized into. Don't realize what we're doing it, you know? When you, you don't kind even of, realize, yeah. You know, your first day of college, first week, you know, it's all froshy, and you're you're trying to kind of mingle, and you just find yourself attracted to certain people. It's so unconscious. Everyone yeah. just kind of forms within a week or two, forms these groups, and a lot of times it's the familiarity that 
causes yeah. these groups to form. Yeah. Familiarity in function or dysfunction. So I think the moral of the story there is just keep trying. Yeah. Keep different meeting different people. Yeah. If you're feeling uneasy and you're finding yourself yeah. in a bad situation and yeah. look at your past. Yeah. Just is, know that peace is attainable. Peace is Inner attainable. Peace. One day, <laughs> peace like, peace is you. attainable. Yeah. And don't give up. Yeah. Peace yeah. is attainable. That's the moral. Right. Yeah. It's the moral of life. Yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah. about that, that's, that's about, about a lot of stuff we got from that movie. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys also uh, picked up on those things. And what else did you notice? Let us know. Mm -hmm. Silver Linings Playbook. Yeah. Yeah. Solid. Indeed. Uh, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Till next time, that's a wrap.